This is Nikhil Sharma for Low Kick MMA. I'm delighted to be joined by Mike, Mad Dog, Fig Lack, at Cage Warriors 141. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm very good. Um, yeah, I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm super excited to interview you after that great performance. Of course, you're coming off a win against Agi Sardari. It was a good performance, and you extended your unbeaten run to eight now. What are your thoughts on how you did? Yeah, I'm very happy with uh, with my record now at eight and zero, but I'm not fully satisfied with my performance because I really wanted to finish him and and put a stamp um, on the fact that I am the best in the division. So I, I am obviously grateful with the win and with how the fight went, but uh, I do want to get those finishes. So I'm already back at the gym working on how I can get these guys finished. Yeah. So. Um... Does it give you more confidence, though, because that's still your most high-profile win on your record so far, right? That you can hang in there with former champions. Yeah, I, I don't just hang, hang in there with them. I beat them, and I, and I haven't lost a round. So uh, I, I know what I'm capable of, and I know I'm capable of the finishes. So that's, that's what I'm looking for in every single one of my fights. And, of course, I'm happy with how the, the fight went, but I'm not fully satisfied that... I already want. To, uh, I'm already back in the gym working on the on the things that I did wrong. I'm going to correct them and come back better. Um, what do you feel like you did wrong in that fight? Just, just I didn't get the finish. That's all. You know, I um, should have been more accurate. Should have been more accurate with the shots. Set them up better and get the finish done. Yeah, let's talk about the title because you've been very vocal in getting a title shot next. How do you feel like you match up with the champion George Hardaway? I think very well because um, George likes to stand and, and exchange punches and I think that'd be perfect for me. Um, all my previous opponents, uh, especially the last three, let's say, uh, maybe not so much Aggie, but um, they were just kind of running away from the fight. Uh, once they once they once they um, kind of get hit a few times, they don't want it anymore. They they fight for survival rather than to win the fight. Aggie did kept coming back with something, but I think uh, by the second round he kind of knew that he's not gonna win. Do you feel like George Hardwick would be that person who would bring that fire, who would get in your face and get um, put on an entertaining show as opposed to cruising the whole way? Yes, I believe so, but. You never know when someone gets hit, they might change their mind quickly. So I hope so. I hope we have a war, to be honest, and uh, yeah, and give the fans a great show. Yeah, what was it like? Um, what was the experience like doing that photo shoot with him? We all saw things got a bit tense over there. It was good. It was. Uh, we just had a good look at each other, and and I think um, we. We have that. We have a bit of respect for each other because we both come in from like a, a fighting family, and then um, we we spoke. We spoke. I spoke to him after his fight, and uh, we spoke when we did that photo shoot. And he's up for the fight, and I'm up for the fight. So it, it's all about just Kate Boys making it now. Yeah, and are you happy that Hardwick is a champion because he recently became a champion as well, or would you have preferred Kyle Driscoll in terms of how you match up stylistically? Uh, I don't care. I don't care who is the champion or who has the belt. I just know that I'm coming for that belt and uh, and it's going to be mine and that's it. I don't really care who it is. I think maybe uh, going into that event, let's say, I thought that uh, George Hardwick uh, has done more in the division than, the, than Kyle has. But to be honest, I didn't care. I didn't care. I'll, I'll fight any of them. As long as the belt is on the line, that, that's what I want. Were you impressed by how Hardwick won the title? I've only seen a little, I think the end, I think I'm, no, I didn't even see the finish. I only saw like the third round, I think, as I came out to this, uh, to the stands. But same thing that he does all the time. Pressures people and then puts them on the cage and gets the body shots going. So yeah, it was a good performance from him, but he was fighting a wrestler. Yeah, and you did uh, make a very good point earlier where, like, Hardwick has got a finish in all of his last four outings, either by KO or TKO. So do you feel like it'll be a quick fight if you guys do get paired up, or do you feel like it might go the distance? It just depends how much damage he can take. 
you're, you're dead set on going out there and bringing the fire to him. Um, love to see it, man. Always. Um, now, you've also expressed your desire to be the GOAT and that you want to achieve a lot. You still sound like, like you mentioned, you're back in the gym training already. So what is it that motivates you? What's your goal ahead? It's just my life. And my, my main goal, which is to be a world champion and then from there uh, to, to be a GOAT. That, that's all I kind of think about when it comes to this sport. And this is all I do. I'm a full-time fighter. And, and literally, after I finish one fight the next day, I just feel like I need to get another fight going because that's what I that's what I do in my life. It, uh, it just with MMA and with injuries and things like that, it takes it takes a long time. Or like they do fights every two months or three months. I want to be in there all the time. So uh, that's and then my end goal keeps me going all the time. And I know that I have to keep improving to be to be that person to be the best in the world. So. Uh, that's what I try to do all the time, just keep improving, keep um, beating the last version of myself. So what's a perfect career look like for you, Mike? Are you, um, is it being a UFC champion? Is it being a two-division champion? Is there someone you want to model yourself after? I know you've said like you never lose a round, so is Habib maybe your idol where like you want to go through unbeaten, undefeated, and not even drop a round? Of course, yeah, that would be perfect. Of course, I idolize Khabib and um, the guys that are at the top but I kind of want to make my own way and um, write my own story and then and then and be unique in that way but of course uh, in terms of yeah I don't want to lose any rounds I don't want to lose any fights I just want to keep uh, destroying my opposition and being the most dominant champion in the world yeah and now talking about your fighting family um let's talk about your brother for a minute what's it like fighting with him on the same card do you feel like you guys would be the next like um the power sibling duo almost like the diaz brothers you guys can market yourself in a similar fashion yeah yeah i think so and also we what we bring to the table as well is exciting fights we always have exciting fights we always bring the fight to our opponents and we are going to be two, two UFC champions and at lightweight and at welterweight. And, and, and then when you mentioned about the two division champion, and then we're going to decide from there whether Matt is going to go up to middleweight and I'm going to take the welterweight belt. Oh, well, that kind of, um, it, it's similar to what Kamaru Usman and Israel Adesanya, the agreement that they seem to have right now. We were like, Usman won't go up until Izzy goes up and gets that belt. Yeah, but that's um, strange for me because they're not brothers. They're not yeah. blood-related, so they should be fighting each other. I mean, this isn't... They're kind of making it a bit too much about friendship. They're not brothers, so I don't know how close they are, but they, they, they live on the other side of the world from each other. I think they should be fighting. If they if that's what Kamara wants to do, they should be fighting each other to see yeah, who the best guy is, and that's it. <laughs> that's exactly what Kamara Usman's manager... Um, Ali Abdulaziz, that's what he's been pushing for, even though Usman has been very clear, like, okay, I don't want the fight. And Ali Abdulaziz keeps on saying that you should fight, you should get yeah. it. What do you think would happen if Usman actually fought Adesanya? Who do you think would win? I think Adesanya would win. Adesanya would snipe him, I think. Um, Us Usman, of course, he's an amazing fighter, very good wrestling, and his striking has obviously improved very much. And he's a very good striker as well. He knocked out Masvidal. But I think the range that Israel can keep, and then obviously we saw him getting taken down by uh, Jan, the Polish power, but that Jan is huge. He's a very big guy, you know? That's why he was able to grab hold of him. You see all the middleweights, they can't take Izzy down because he's very good with distance control. And I think he could keep Usman away, and then he's very sharp, very good technically. Um, so I think he would probably win, yeah. Yeah, and Jan recently, um, another Polish fighter, he's uh, recently indicated that he might go down to 185 and take on Izzy for the middle of it title. And then you have Pereira waiting on the outside. So Adesanya's got a lot of people just waiting in the line, being like, okay, we all... I want to see that Pereira fight. I want to see that Pereira fight. I look, I was, I watched a few of Pereira, uh, Pereira's fights from kickboxing and, and, and MMA. And the guy is very good. The guy is, I want to see how how he can manage that distance against Izzy because he's, he has very similar physical attributes. I think he's slightly taller. So I would love to see him 
uh, fight Israel. And then um, I wonder if Israel will try to take him down. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something watching at a Sunday? Yeah, but I people. hope they don't. I hope they stand and go because they are very good strikers. So it'd be very good to see. Um, do you think Pereira would be able to get it done in MMA as well? Because in the second group fight, maybe Arasanya feels confident that he was doing well up until the point he got that touch of death from him. Yeah, on um, on paper he shouldn't, right? He's just although although actually I found out that Pereira has actually been doing MMA, uh, has done MMA before Israel, so I wonder. Uh, because he hasn't got that experience, I think that might affect him. But um, I just want to see the fight. I think it's going to be a really close fight in the striking. I just want to, I, for me as a fan, I would like to see how they handle each other striking with them small gloves. And, yeah. then I, and then I could see what techniques they would be using and then I can break it down for myself. But it's that fight would be very good. I, I, it's, it's a very exciting fight to think about, being as they already fought twice. And then how is the match going to look with the small gloves? A hundred percent. Do you feel like, I do feel like that's a match we are going to get to see. Coming back to Jan Blahovic possibly taking on Arisanya at middleweight. First, do you think Jan can make middleweight? And then if he no. does, do you think? No, <laughs> no he can't make middleweight. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. These people do crazy weight cuts nowadays, so I don't know. But... I think it will definitely affect his performance. And yeah, I think I think if he was to fight, if he makes the way and fights at the sign, I think he can win it. He has, he has a very good... What I think he did very well in that fight was he stood his ground very... Like, he stood his ground when Adesanya would come back with counters. And I think what a lot of other guys do, they kind of back away when uh, Israel counters. And then he can, he, can, he can control that distance very well. But what Jan did was he kind of walked through that and got close to uh, Israel, which was very good. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe if he can make 185, he can beat him again. Yeah, well, that would be something cool to watch, see who hands Arisanya is forced to feed at middleweight. Um, I feel like you have a very good grasp of what the UFC is looking for in terms of getting other fighters, right? They'll, they have made it very clear. They're only looking for entertaining fights. That's what you're looking to put on, exciting fights. You're disappointed you didn't get a finish. So clearly, there is a sense that it matters whether you get a finish or you get a decision. Does that affect you mentally going into a fight? No, it doesn't affect me. Uh, well, it, it doesn't affect me or not. It doesn't affect me negatively. It only affects me in a way that I know that I'm uh, looking for the finish. I know that I want to get the finish. And whenever I see that opportunity in the cage, I'm going for it. And yeah, that's the only way it affects me. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me negatively at all where I think like, oh, I'm not getting a finish or something like that. Or, um, I never let thoughts like that get to my mind. Yeah, yeah, because I always um, wonder about that, how different a, a fighter would go into the cage just mentally thinking that, okay, I need to get a finish if I want to make a move up in my career as opposed to being like, okay, I just want to go in and win. Um, so if there was one message, Mike, that you could send to the UFC lightweights, what would it be? I'm coming. I'm coming for all of them. Uh, yeah, that's it. Any particular person in mind that you want to take on or your dream fight? Um, I said before Justin Gaethje, but I think he's going to be retired within the next year or two. But obviously, I have massive respects to these uh, respect to these guys and Oliveira, and I mean Oliveira is doing amazing, and um, I'm looking forward to the fight, uh, to watching the fight, um, Islam versus Oliveira. That's going to be a hell of a fight. But yeah, if I I wanted to fight Gaethje because of just stylistically, me going forward, and he it would it would be just a very entertaining fight, and it would be a war. So, um, but I still got. I still need to get my way up there. So um, uh, I need to keep winning the fights here and then I'll make my way into the UFC and then in the UFC, I'll, I'll climb up and that's when I'll fight the new guys. But I reckon, I reckon it's going to be uh, the next generation, I think, because Chandler, Gaethje, Oliveira, they've had so many fights. They are like a kind of, I believe they are at the end of their careers in terms of within the next two or three years. 
So, of course, if I can make my way up quickly uh, in the UFC, then I would, I would of course, love to fight them. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, because Gaethje has already had two title challenges. He's held the belt yeah. for a bit, too. So it's, um, it looks unlikely he'll get a third shot at the title anytime soon with him getting no surgery. What about Rafael Pizzia, though? He's another striker. He's, he could be another interesting matchup for after you join. Um, but I didn't want to ask you first, Mike. Who do you think is going to win, Oliveira or Mahacho? I think Oliveira. Yeah. I think, of course, Islam. I think Islam thinks that he's going to go there and just wrestle him and, and Oliveira will just... Uh, won't be able to do anything, and of course, <laughs> but I just I can't see it. I think uh, Oliveira's grappling is very good, and we saw Islam struggle with uh, some grapplers before, like um, the guy that just fought Mateusz Gamrot. Um, Sarukin. Sarukin, yeah, Sarukin gave him a very good fight, and I don't believe his jujitsu is as good as Oliveira's. His wrestling is very good as well, but jujitsu wise, I don't think so. And he, I think he went for a couple of guillotines. And he had some very good scrambles with Islam. I think it was a close, close fight, actually. So, I, I think Oliveira gets it done. I think he's going to uh, do it with a guillotine. Oh, wow. Very specific there yeah. um, with a guillotine. So, you feel like it'll go to the ground or standing? Because Oliveira can do it anywhere. I think, uh, it, I think it's going to be like an exchange where Islam will shoot on the cage and Oliveira might snatch, it, snatch his neck. Mm, but would, yeah. it's a very interesting fight and obviously these guys are very very good so uh we'll see <laughs> are you surprised to see Oliveira open as the betting underdog uh no because of how dominant islam was but obviously no one wanted to fight islam so his his kind of opponents although they were very good fighters in the ufc they were not the um not within the top five uh, at this time anyway and then you could see o Oliveira had harder fights and he got dropped so that can sway people uh, towards Islam because of how dominant he is although Oliveira still finished his fight he, he did get hit and we kind of saw uh, saw him losing rounds let's say but with Islam he was just running through everyone so it's um, I think we'll know who's going to win that fight very quickly because it's, it's going to show in the res, wrestling exchanges and on the ground. If, if Islam gets him down, can he keep him down? Is he going to start getting trapped into submissions like Kevin Lee did, let's say? Because Kevin Lee was a, is a very good wrestler. But as soon as he took uh, Oliveira down, he was just getting trapped in all, all, all types of submissions. So we'll see. We'll see. I think we'll know by the, by the finish of the first round who's going to kind of take the fight. Yeah, um, if I was to ask you, Mike, who's your goat in MMA and who's your lightweight goat? Is it Oliver? Oh, who's my goat? Who? My goat is John Jones. Although, obviously, he has some weird things that happened with the um, steroids. But if you, if you take that out of the equation, then he, he said, like, and, and um, I might be wrong on this, but I think he had like 14 championship fights and he won all of them. Uh, so he's the GOAT for me. Of course, Khabib is up there as well. But if you compare that with Khabib, Khabib's had like four, I think, four uh, championship fights. So, of course, he has a big record. But John Jones did fight a lot of a lot more champions. And he uh, he won a lot of a lot more of those championship fights. Although they were like, it, they were strange the way it was because he came out of the UFC, then he came back. But he did have 14. So, uh, yeah, I think John Jones is the GOAT in terms of lightweight. Yeah, Khabib is the GOAT of lightweight. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, he's undefeated. He destroyed everyone. Uh, I would love to see him fight Oliveira. But I think even if it was someone else, if it wasn't Oliveira that was at the top and Khabib retired, we'd be saying, oh, I'd love to see him fight that guy now. But, yeah, every time... Every time you'd say that with Khabib, you would just go in there and completely destroy his opponent. So, um, yeah, Khabib is the lightweight go 100%. Yeah, very fair analysis there. Because, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Just like anyone who be the champion today will always be compared to Khabib because he's the gold standard for the division. Um, I did want to ask you about John Jones, though. Are you excited to see him debut at heavyweight? And they have been, um, he's been linked to a fight with Stipe Miocic. 
How do you think that will go down? I think, yeah, I'm very excited to see John Jones back. Um, we, in terms of the fight with Stipe, Stipe is a very good fighter, but John Jones is just, I think he's just one step ahead. I think he's one step ahead of everyone because although some of his last fights were close, I watched, I watched some of them recently, actually, before my fight. And the way he breaks people down, like with his kicks and the way he mixes it up, that uh, second Daniel Cormier fight was, he just came out looking like the best, <laughs> the best ever. So, yeah, you, yeah, I would never bet against John Jones. Yeah, I think John Jones defeats uh, Miocic. The only thing that, the only person that I think can uh, challenge John Jones a lot is Ngannou. Because of his power, that guy touches someone and it just lights out. So um, that would be a very interesting fight, Ngannou versus John Jones. Yeah, the, in, in a dream world, um, Jones would come back, possibly get the interim title and then welcome Ngannou yeah. in his return. But who knows what's going to happen with all the contract disputes. Do you ever think about that yeah. when you see UFC champions having these disputes with the company? Does that ever bother you at all or not? No, not really. I mean, um, they're already earning a, a lot of money and, and obviously they, they are arguing for more. I, I think they are financially stable and if they feel like they should be valued more, they should argue for it. So just let them argue for it and then if they can get more money, they can get more money because this sport is very brutal. Uh, it's, it's not a, necessarily the longest career. So I hope and I wish to everyone who enters this sport to earn as much money as possible doing it. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, Paddy Pimler, um, he infamously got 12 and 12 for his second last appearance now. Because in his last appearance, he got a new contract. He asked for more money and got what he was deserved. Do you take inspiration from someone like Paddy Pimler who had a very similar route to the one that you're on right now to get into the UFC? Yeah, I think I think a lot of people like have some hate towards Paddy, but you have to respect what he does. He's a he's a very entertaining person. He's a very he's like I don't know if people are born with with that type of a thing or 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 what because this guy is very entertaining and he puts a lot of work into that. And and he also wins fights. So, um I don't have anything bad to say about Paddy. I think he's he's doing great. Um, and then I, I wish him all the best and, and we'll see if he can make it to the top. But it's great that he re-signed his contract and he's getting more money as well. Yeah, Mike, I have to say, it's been a pleasure talking to you so far. Before we wrap it up, I would like to give you the floor to give a shout out to sponsors, teammates, anyone else you would like to. Yeah, so in regards to my last fight, uh, thank you for uh, all the training from Trojan Free Fighters. And then also thank you to all my sponsors that keep supporting me. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, Mike. And we look forward to your return. All the best, everyone. Nice one. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.